So I turn around, and the second I turn around, I go. <laughs> Yo, what's up, it's Jibs. Let's get started. Before we get started, I just wanna preface by saying this video isn't about how to glow up by starting to work out or how to get better at public speaking or how to engage better with other people or get along with other people. It's more about a dialogue and a discussion about the trigger or the emotional trigger that leads to you wanting to have a better life, AKA glowing up. That's what we're gonna be talking about. So if you're looking for a step-by-step -step guide on how to be better at XYZ, this isn't the video for that. But if you are curious about those steps that it takes to trigger that growth mindset, then this will be the video for you. So let me tell you a little bit about who I was before I was 18 years old. So if you would have known me pre-18, pre-18 Jabron, so before senior year of high school, I was this short, chubby, self-conscious, not confident brown kid who was really shy. I remember if I was to get in front of class during uh, for a presentation or for a speech or anything, I would sweat from my armpits, I would stutter, I couldn't look anybody in the eye. There was this one time in French class where we had to give a presentation in front of the class and I literally put my hood up and took my glasses off so I couldn't see anybody. Even then, I just wasn't confident and honestly, I just looked ridiculous. My entire life was non-social. I didn't have a lot of friends. I spent literally, I would wake up before school started, right when I got back from school, I would play RuneScape 24 seven all the time. That was all that was on my mind. I didn't really have many friends. I didn't hang out with anybody. And if I did, uh, it wasn't for very long. I had feelings of inadequacy that stemmed from not having friends, not being outgoing, not feeling like other people were attracted to me. And on top of that, I just wasn't a good student as well, a very average student. I remember kids in school used to think that I was like the smart kid because I wore glasses and I was like this shy brown kid who always sat in front of class. But I sucked at school, so they would want to join me for all the class projects or they'd want to copy off my homework. I got in a fight one time with this kid because he kept copying for my homework and I was sick of it. But that's a story for another day. But anyway, I was also really, really self-conscious about the way that I looked. So I would play around so much with the way that I looked. I remember I would, one time I wore like really baggy shirts and like would sag my pants and wear those hats that were three times bigger than my head. Everybody used to wear Hollister and Abercrombie back in the day because that was like the cool thing to do. And if you had those clothes, like you were, you were like the cool kid. My parents never really wanted to buy those clothes because they were pretty expensive. So I tried to mimic that style as much as I could. I remember I'd wear like bigger shirts so that I could like hide my gut and hide my butt because that's where all my weight went. And I was really self-conscious about that. And I would make sure that how I was walking wouldn't show the different curves in my stomach. And I always thought that I had like a really big nose and I just would try and hide it and minimize it. So I'd wear my glasses on the, on the end of my nose to make it look smaller, but it just ended up looking more weird. I was just this really awkward kid. I didn't have a lot of friends and I had a hard time interacting with people. I didn't know how to talk to people. I remember if I even had the chance to talk to a girl that I just, I couldn't do it. I got really nervous and started acting really weird. I remember this one time in middle school, I would always sit in the front of the class. Always. And I always sat in front of the class because I would come early and I would like read my books, like my fantasy books. I was in the front of this row of desks and we were all doing a worksheet and behind me were all these like really popular, pretty girls and they were all laughing and I was wondering what was going on. So I'm doing my worksheet and I'm wondering, hmm, I wonder what they're laughing about. So I turn around and the second I turn around, I go, Right when I snorted, I turned back around and started doing my worksheet and they started laughing at me. Ugh, that was the worst. So that's just an example of the type of interactions that would happen to me and that were littered throughout my grade school years. So it wasn't until my senior year of high school that I decided that I no longer wanted to be this person that was jealous of other kids because they had friends or envious because other people were able to have better interactions with their colleagues or that they could even talk to girls. Oh, 
I, I wish girls would like me and I wish that I could be confident enough to carry myself in a way that people were naturally drawn to me. Senior year of high school, I consciously decided that every single day would be a day of introspection, retrospection, me thinking of who was I yes yesterday, who am I at this moment, and who do I want to be tomorrow, and I made sure that every single day I was better. I decided that I wanted to work on my speech and that I decided that I wanted to have better social interactions with the people around me. So a lot of people, a lot of guys specifically, like will start working out because they want to attract girls and I'm no different. That's how I started getting into fitness. The more I got into fitness and the more I started challenging myself physically, I noticed that that manifested itself in other parts of my life emotionally. Uh, spiritually and mentally. My senior year of high school, I remember I joined the wrestling team to, to challenge myself physically, to put myself in the situation where you're competing against one another. And I've never been one that's enjoyed competition, but that put me in a spot where I was forced to not only interact with a team of guys and befriend them, but also put my body to a test and push it to the limits to limits that it's never reached before. My senior year of high school, I also decided to join the musical. I've always loved theater and loved acting, and I decided that I'm gonna join the musical, and even though I wasn't in the actual musical, I was part of the crew, just being a part of that environment really made me more outgoing because, as you know, theater kids are super outgoing. If you are a shy person and you're surrounded by that kind of energy, then they're just gonna bring that out of you also. So my senior year of high school is basically like a starter pack for me to go into college the next year and transform myself and be the person that I wanted to always be. And my entire college career was me just being better every single day. And that meant, you know, joining clubs and making friends and getting into relationships, romantic and platonic, really like turning myself into the man that I know I always wanted to be and of course there were a lot of mistakes and a lot of lessons learned and things that I embodied that I found later that I don't know why I'm doing this but those are all part of the process. Through this process you know I found that oh I should be thinking this way if I want to be like this or if I should act this way if I want so and so to like me and I, I can remember that a lot of times when you try to change the way that you think it backfires on you and it doesn't work and the way that the world really works is that you don't need to change your thoughts but you can change your reaction to the world around you and if you learn to react to the world in, in the way that benefits you turns you into the person that you want to be then everybody wins from my story there was a turning point and that turning point was chronologically the beginning of my senior year of high school and what that shift signified was me using every single day to become a better person, to become a better human, a better brother, a better son, a better part of society. Just a person that really started working on themselves every single day. But what le what leads to that? I think a lot of times we find people being motivated by these external factors like, oh, they see somebody on Instagram that went through this transformation and they wanna do that too. And so you find people doing New Year's resolutions or 90-day challenges, and then after a month has passed, they no longer have that motivation and they quit moving forward. Or you find people wanting to be better in some way, but never lasting. So I think what really happened in my life was this really big shift, this flame that was ignited by me being basically sick of my life. There was this you know, this portion of my life where I just was sick and tired of not being confident and not being the man who I know that I could be. And for me, that was the emotional trigger. And for a lot of people, their emotional triggers are different. But what's important is when that emotional trigger happens, it leads to this lifelong journey of glowing up constantly. Glowing up is not a destination, it's a lifelong journey. You're not trying to reach some final form, you're not trying to go Super Saiyan 4 blue, God form. Even Goku is always reaching this new level of power. Where are my DBZ fans at? I think a big part of this journey is understanding that at the end of the day, you're not gonna be going through this glow up process if you're not 
aching every single day for change in your life. One of the things that really motivated me, especially in college, to keep improving and keep wanting to be better was this quote that I saw by Banksy. Banksy is one of the world's most recognized graffiti artists. If you don't know him by name, you definitely know one of his art pieces. So on the wall, it said, they say you died twice. One time when you stop breathing and a second time a bit later on when somebody says your name for the last time. And when I had read that, that triggered something in my brain to be like, well, I understand that everybody in this world is gonna die at some point, but there are a lot of people throughout history that we can name now. We can name Martin Luther King, we can name Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Gandhi, Alexander the Great, Joan of Arc, Jesus, Prophet Muhammad, these are all names that we say, and these are people that have not died because their names are still spoken. And that motiv motivated me every single day to just want to be better. I want to be remembered. And that was a really, honestly, a selfish way to think. And I don't relate to that quote anymore. I realized that chasing after those things was self-destructive, not for the greater good of society as a whole. But Anyway, I digress. But it was really important for me to be driven by that desire to wanting to be remembered. And so that fire is what made me want to be better every single day, even though I am not connected to that desire that I had previously anymore. But those habits that I ended up forming from that time have stuck with me. And so now every single day, I am improving myself in different ways. One of the facets of my life that provoked that initial trigger was me never feeling like I fit in. I never had a lot of friends. I never hung out with a lot of people or related to a lot of people. And I had realized the power of one person being able to relate to somebody like that and how that can make them feel. So part of this glow up journey is me striving every day to create these deeper relationships and having more meaningful relationships. The thing about me pre-18 or pre-glow up, whatever you want to call it, is that I never talked a lot, but I've always been really good at hearing and listening to people and understanding and empathizing with what they are feeling at that time. So that was a strength that I had that I took and I fostered and I planted it in the ground and I watered it every single day so that now my ability to listen and to empathize with people has manifested itself in my professional career and I use it every single day. At the end of the day, if you're aching for this change in your life or if you're really wanting to go on this glow up journey, you might be concerned about what other people in your life are thinking. You might be concerned of what your group of friends are gonna think if you wanna start dressing in a certain way or if you wanna start joining the, the theater squad or if you wanna join this group or if you wanna start doing these different things. People, you might fear that people are gonna judge you. And if people are judging you, they're more so just jealous about the confidence that you have in undergoing these things. Honestly, you think about yourself way more than other people think about you. If you think people are gonna think about you five years down the line of you wanting to change your life, then you're completely wrong. If anything, people are gonna wanna connect with you even more on a deeper level and realize that you have a lot of things to offer in this life because you decided to go through this lifelong journey of improving yourself and wanting to be better. I want everybody to understand that glowing up really is a mindset shift. If you want to become a better speaker, you wanna be better at engaging with other people and have deeper empathetic relationships with people on a platonic level or on a romantic level, or if you just wanna become more physically fit, that there is a mindset shift that needs to happen that is on a much deeper level and it is tied to you really aching for and having a deep desire and fire to want to create those changes in your life and it's not about you following instagram posts that motivate you every single day because motivation will die but when you have that inner desire to want to keep doing things and when you create habits that stick with you every single day and you stick to those habits 
day by day, that's when you really start glowing up and that's when people start noticing. You know, if you were to ask people about the way that I present, presented myself when I was younger versus now, then people would say that Gibran presents himself with a, in a way that you can tell that he loves himself. And at the end of the day, glowing up is you realizing that you have so much potential loving yourself and that you can contribute so much more to this world than you think that you can. On that note, I want everybody to glow up and blossom and turn into this golden shiny butterfly that's spreading love and positivity into the world. Yeah. Peace.